Today we're going to talk about UV maps. Um, you've probably not heard a lot about them if you haven't looked at anything other than your principal 3D modeling software, because in the fashion world, we don't really need them. Um, probably the best way to think about a UV map is basically a flat pattern. Um, unlike what we do where we start with a flat pattern and then we stitch it together and drape it on a model in order to replicate uh, a garment in real life in the cg world they would do the opposite they either model something or sculpt something and then once they have that 3d form in order to start putting textures and colors and things on it they've got to flatten it out um, into a flat pattern basically so maybe maybe think of it as like draping on a mannequin if you've ever done the, the draping discipline of pattern making where you're just putting some cloth onto a mannequin, pinning and 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 stitching and, and cutting until it's the garment you like, and then you have to take it apart and put it flat. Well, I guess that's sort of like unwrapping a UV model or unwrapping a model into a UV map. So for an example, let's take this cube. And if I wanted to put a texture on this cube, if I just went ahead and stuck up an image on it, You can probably guess that's not exactly what I was hoping to get. My image seems cut up and it's split all over the place and it's that's not what I wanted. So how do I get what I wanted? I need to unwrap this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a few lines. And sometimes this is easier said than done. And then I'm going to say mark seam so that if I were to go into my UV editor, that's how my cube unwraps. Now that I have this, this um, unwrapped UV map, if I wanted to go into something like Photoshop, knowing that these are the faces of my cube, I could start putting images into the area. I would export this UV map and then I would place, sort of place an image here, place an image here, place an image here. So that later, if I wanted to bring that in, it might look something like that. And then when I apply it on my model, except my orientation is wrong, which is one of the reasons why doing it in Photoshop like this is not always the best way because it's, it's not, you're not seeing it in real time. There's other better ways, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how these UV maps work and what they're all about so that when we look at them in Clo or your own favorite software you have a better idea of what we're talking about so let's let's put this away now in Clo so we really don't need to use the UV maps or UV editor for anything if we're just staying within Clo or Browser or Gerber or whatever modeling software you're using. It's only if you want to go into something else. One of my favorites is Painter, um, Adobe 3D Substance Painter. Uh, it's this great program for texturing and doing a lot of really nice fun details and things that you don't really get as well in other platforms. So in order for this to work in Substance, we've got to lay out the UVs. So up where it says simulation, I'll go to UV editor. And this is, can be somewhat confusing because even though it looks like you have all this real estate to use, really it's this part of the screen here from zero one up, the positive integers that you wanna be using, not these negatives. I don't know why there's all this space in the layout that you can't use. Somebody will explain it to me someday, I hope. And then the next thing you need to know is whether the program you're going into supports the UDIM workflow. That's U-D-I-M. A lot of the software packages that you might use require that you pack all of your UV chunks or your pattern pieces into this one tile. And the thing about packing them into one tile is that you don't get great resolution because your pieces are smaller versus this, this tile. So it affects how well your, your texture is going to show up. So if if your software only supports the one tile, and you've got to know this, um, typically what you want to do is you take your pieces and you just grab them and stretch them until they all fit. 
And you've got to st stretch them uniformly because otherwise, if you've got some sort of pattern, like if you had checks or prints or something, maybe the flowers will be bigger on the sleeve than on the body of the shirt. So it's, it's important to do your scaling uniformly. It's also important that your pieces not overlap each other and not cross the boundary. Not overlapping because as you saw in, in the previous little video in Blender, this image, we're gonna drop a texture image. You're gonna drop your, your cloth, your whatever it is that you want to show up onto this. And if your pieces are overlapping, then the system doesn't know how to apply that, that image properly. So you give yourself some space. This is probably a little bit too big. I maybe want to shrink it down a little bit. And then in Clove, for example, this is a plane, so I don't need to worry about it. But if this were a check and I wanted my checks to line up, obviously the bottom or the top of my shirt has to be aligned. So I can select both, right click and align bottom. They may be a little too close to the edge. So I'm just going to scooch them up a little bit. And then my sleeves are going to be... Mm. And then the orientation is important because despite what you've done in, in your modeling software, it's this orientation that the next program is going to read for the pattern layout. So if I had stripes and I'm running the stripe up and down, all of a sudden the stripe is going to cut across the sleeve. If this were a stripe, I'd probably want to turn the sleeve this way. And these are important considerations, especially if you're getting into pattern matching. Now that's a little bit more complex, but so in this orientation, I could probably make them a little bit bigger. That said, if your software supports the UDIM workflow, a lot of the software packages that you might use require that you pack all of your UV chunks or your pattern pieces into this one tile. And the thing about packing them into one tile is that you don't get great resolution because your pieces are smaller versus this, this tile. So it affects how well your, your texture is going to show up. So if, if your software only supports the one tile and you've got to know this, um, typically what you want to do is you take your pieces and you just grab them and stretch them until they all fit. And you've got to st stretch them uniformly because otherwise if you've got some sort of pattern, like if you had checks or prints or something, maybe the flowers will be bigger on the sleeve than on the body of the shirt. So it's, it's important to do your scaling uniformly. It's also important that your pieces not overlap each other and not cross the boundary. Not overlapping because as you saw in, in the previous little video in Blender, this image, we're going to drop a texture image, you were going to drop your, your cloth, your whatever it is that you want to show up onto this. And if your pieces are overlapping, then the system doesn't know how to apply that, that image properly. So you give yourself some space. This is probably a little bit too big. I maybe want to shrink it down a little bit. And then in Clove, for example, this is a plane, so I don't need to worry about it. But if this were a check and I wanted my checks to line up, obviously, the bottom or the top of my shirt has to be aligned. So I can select both, right click and align bottom. They may be a little too close to the edge. So I'm just going to scooch them up a little bit. And then my sleeves are going to be... Mm. And then the orientation is important because despite what you've done in, in your modeling software, it's this orientation that the next program is going to read for the pattern layout. So if I had stripes and I'm running the stripe up and down, all of a sudden the stripe is going to cut across the sleeve. If this were a stripe, I'd probably want to turn the sleeve this way. And these are important considerations, especially if you're getting into pattern matching. Now that's a little bit more complex, but so in this orientation, I could probably make them a little bit bigger. That said, if your software supports the UDIM workflow, and Substance Painter does, that means that you can work across multiple tiles. So instead of having them all packed into this one, you want to select them all, and assuming one of your pieces is bigger than the others, you would scale them so that your biggest piece just fits into this first tile. And then I can go and space them out. And in this case, I'd like to try to keep 
materials that are similar grouped together. Just makes it easier to work later. And then I'll bring these over here. Again, being conscious, this is a plane, but if we're stripe, I probably want to turn these around too. And then it is, again, important to line up checks. Now, if we've got the smart guides with help, if we had other things like sleeves where we had notches and things, unfortunately, there's no notches. The Clo doesn't show the internals on these pieces, so the UV editor can be a little tricky if you need to align things like checks and patterns because I would want to drive, drop a, a straight line across here to line up with my sleeves and things. And that'll be the subject of a, of a more advanced uh, tutorial about UV layouts and how to, how to deal with plaids and using some old school marker making hacks to do it. But now my pieces are scaled appropriately. They're placed into the proper tiles going 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's how the systems recognize each other because they number them. So you've got a, a row going across and columns going up. So they, they would number them that way. Oh, and I forgot my thread. Believe it or not, that's a stitch. That's how Clove sees a stitch. And they have to be in this space or it'll kick up an error. So that's basic intro to UV mapping.